email um, about one. Do you mind if I talk about that problem really quickly that you had sent me? All right. Right. Okay. I, I I did I did I did see the other attempts, but I didn't look at them in any any detail. Um, and hopefully this will clarify some of the. And it could throw a residency type exception. Now you could put, but you could throw it here as well. All right. So for the second, we'll say that we're throwing. So. One of the criteria, we could throw residency exception. All right. Now, what are your choices when you throw an accept exception? You can throw it if it's a checked exception, that is, if it inherits from exception. You can either catch or you could. All right. You can like, hey, the next person, hey, there's a problem to deal with. So, let throws. We decide this guy is going to throw it. All right. So the question if the person isn't one of the valid residency types. We now have grad students. And their method to calculate the rate goes something like this. Double rate equals super get rate. Then we say rate equals rate times two return rate. Okay? So everyone clear we have a get in both the sub for class. In the super a resident exception um, exception if certain criteria is met or not met, however you want to look at it. The group The super get rate. And more when that's the rate for graduate students. Yes or no? Okay, yes. Almost seems like it have to be a yes, otherwise, like, why are you talking about it, right? <laughs> you know, it's like. Like, amazing, there's a crisis chapter, right? You know. What quickly? Uh, 
Okay. No. No. Well, you're right. Should we understand exactly why? Problem. Well, this method right here could throw in the exception. So, when there's a exception to be thrown, what do you have to do? Either you handle it or you throw it. All right? So, this method has the potential to throw a residency exception. Therefore, either we need a trunch around this to catch the exception, or this is the get rate needs to throw a residency exception. Again, this is no this get method is no different than any other method that would call the superclasses get rate. Any method that calls the superclasses get rate is going to need to either handle the exception or throw it for someone else to handle. All right? And so here, it's so that this is the overridden version of the, of the rate, but that really doesn't matter. Any method that calls this. Since this can get, generate a residency exception, this method, any method that calls it, has to either catch it or throw the exception. Now, total algorithm for calculating the tuition for a graduate student. Maybe a graduate student, it didn't matter where you lived, right? Maybe your graduate rate was calculated some other All right. And then you wouldn't have to handle the residency exception because that residency exception isn't thrown. So I just anything to do with the the get right. It has to do with the fact that it is called that could be thrown the exception, and after it needs to handle it. Ever call. All right. And typically we're going to see that um, we're going to have the uh, UI handling the exceptions. Is and do all kinds of stuff. to be right the exception because the word the exception context. In other words, what exception is this particular exception being thrown as part of? What are the circumstances about this particular exception being thrown? Or any of that? Yes. Okay. Sure. But to your thing and enumeration, uh, the enumeration would be this. That would work if you were only interested in it being one of a certain number of values. If there was a more involved sort of validation scheme, for example, you can't have a large stuffed crust. That wouldn't fly with an enumeration, in which case you'd be better off using an exception. But on enumerations and looked through it and thought through it, and yeah, that probably would work as well. Um, now, the code from last time. Let me pull it up. Tell it is going to be winter by the fact that it is 115 degrees in here today. 
really? Yeah. It was on 10 during the summertime, and it got warmer. Yeah, it went up an extra five, because it sure seems warm today. Which one? The one with the custom exceptions? Okay, let's look at that one first. That's not it. What am I looking at? Yes. So none of my business logic classes, from what I remember, again, don't have it all memorized, but I'm pretty sure none of my business logic classes handle the rule. Either the GUI or sort of the RAM creates and determining the context and that's most most the exceptions in. You know, you know. some exceptional characteristic with an order, some exception condition. Um, if someone is keying in an order, one is calling an order via phone, uh, you, so if there, you would want to say, hey, there's a problem. Is, you know, there's a problem. You, could you reread me the product number or whatever? You want to deal an exception happen as part of a bank. like at the end of the day we'll go through and we're going to look at today's order so that we can pull inventory and and do that that do a whole and we we'll be a screen for you to pop news and we'll deal with the same sort of error that, that whatever in a like maybe by exception report. So if you think of as as there being exception that the code really is going to be exceptions is sort of the bond, the code that creates and calls and then the test, the unit test uh, class when we get will be the GUI. If we run to tester call and would do the exception handling there. All right. So, like sweeping uh, statements, but that 
be the guy I would say. You know, how that depends on getting that air. I, I want the ability in different situations to do different things. Let's look at GUIs. So, two GUI examples. And I think they do the same thing. They just, uh, two different ways of doing the same thing. we go. A GUI. Text or the temperature in centigrade and it will convert it to Fahrenheit. So let me enter the temperature in here today in centigrade. In centigrade I would guess it's about 84 centigrade which means that it is 183 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty accurate within a couple degrees I would say. All right. Let's put in something bogus here. Temperature is that. Invalid input. Okay? All right, let's go and look at this, and then when we close this, the program ends and we're out of it. So everything's in the one class. Because, again, we're taking this slow, one step at a time. If I go and edit it, I import a couple first. User interface components. So no packages. We extends J frame. All right, J frame is essentially a window, right? So I don't have to put any. I don't have to code any of the window-like functionalities. All right, because it inherits from window. So anything that was built in the framework for a window, I can do with this. So for example. Here at the bottom. That's a built-in method. That's a method in JFrame. So I don't have to code that. So a lot of the, a lot of the things associated with a window are, you get for free simply by inheriting that. Now, implements action listener. All right. We have and when we press happens. All right. In general, there is a set as the listener for a GUI control. And what do we interact with the GUI? And When you click that, it is going to run and do its thing. So this we extend. So it frame. It is a window, and it 
action listener. Now, no implies is that clock serve the role an action listener. That put in this clock to handle when a Now, what does it mean to implement an interface? Right. We have to implement all the methods that exist on that interface. What does it exist in Action Listener? We can all that. Action performed. All right. And action performed gets called automatically with an action event. And that tells details about like what actually happened. That might be useful in a more complicated user interface, but with an interface with a text box and a button, you can bet the only thing that happened is someone clicked the button. <laughs> All right. So therefore, we're not really using any of that. Yes. On click is a particular kind of listener. All right. In other words, if you were to look through the inheritance structure of an on click listener, you would see somewhere down the line, I can virtually guarantee it for you, would be um, an action listener. Or they implemented it, uh, they, they implemented, uh, maybe they took another path in implementing it. But yeah. Um, this is an action listener, and again, we're handling it when it clicks um, that. You can tell by looking at the prefix in the import if it's uh, an Android thing or a Java thing. All right. So, in a nutshell, this is the first time that we have anything in our main class besides that main method, right? Remember, in all our unit tests, all we've had for the most part, we might have had a handful of exceptions, but all we had was a main method, right? And that main method created all the different objects and tested them, did their thing, outputted the answer. Here, we have a main method, which is a static method, which means it doesn't require an instance of the class. And its job is to just get the ball rolling. So, when I call the main method on this class, which is a static method, means it doesn't have to have an instance of the class, the first thing it does is it creates a new first GUI object. All right? New first GUI object. Well, what does that mean when I create a new first GUI object? That means that the construct for the GUI object, new first GUI object, is going to be created. What's the constructor? This guy right here. So, when I run my test code, in this case, when I run the GUI code, all my main does is says, make one of these guys. And what is one of these guys? Well, it's a, my first GUI class, which extends JFrame. That means that it has all the characteristics of a JFrame or a window in Java. And we're going to do some things to that window to sort of set things up. What are we doing to the to the window? We're going to set. We're going to make. And they close now. When you click, this program finishes. We're going to set the size of the window. And then we're going to create all the different controls in the window. All right.
How do I create those controls? Well, I create a panel. You can put a panel within a frame. I add to that panel the different UI controls. And I have four UI controls. Let's run this and take a look at them. I have a label that says that. That's one UI control. I have a text box where I put in the temperature. I have a button and then I have a text box for the result. So my panel, this panel, that lives in this window has four things in it. And if I look at my code, here I am adding those four things to my panel. Where are those defined? They're defined up here. What is label temp? It is a J label. Called label temp. What is it? It's a new J label that contains the text enter temperature and centigrade. What is TXT temp? It is a text field which means it's editable as opposed to a label which is read only. TXT temp equals new text field and I'm leaving four spaces on it. That's why if we look at this it's more or less four spaces long. <laughs> Depending on the font and all that it actually could be bigger but it's more or less four spaces big. I then have a button, which is J button, button convert, and that's the label on the button, convert. And then finally I have a results label that starts out blank. Um, and then uh, it will put the result. Let's follow the, the stream here. I go compile it, get my class. I type in Java first GUI. What does that do? That does any time I typed in Java in the name of the class. It looks for the main event or main method and executes that. What does that do? And again, it's a static method, so I can call even before there's any instances of that class. What I'm making? I'm making an instance of the class. I'm making an object called new first GUI. Or with my command new first GUI, I'm making an object. What would I make an object? Well, it calls a constructor. That's a constructor. And what, while I'm setting some properties of my frame, Remember, first GUI extends JFrame, so anything I can do to JFrame, such as make it, so I can do to first GUI. So here, I make it visible. Here, I, what happens when I close? Here, I size. Actually, we I create a panel. We're going to skip this for a minute. Then I add panel, my control I have defined up here. So puts them on the GUI. Now, as far as like this, or make it like giving it a layout, so put them boom right next to each other. The first label, the text, the button, and then finally the last label. My to go set the pane of this window to the pane that I just created. 
All right. That's pain, P-A-N-E, not P-A-I-N. So, you know, being like the frame, the pain being like the picture that we're going to put in the picture frame, we are for a picture or painting we want, and then we pop the picture in the picture frame. No. Get content pain is what makes. This GUI, these GUI we create formed here with the actual physical frame that pops. Now, the one is this guy. Whoops. Add action listener this. All right. First of all, this mean. It means the. So this, in this context, means this. Action listener again is that can handle the user interacting with a UI. So we need to do something user clicks on the button. Right? So come do the math to count centigrade and the Fahrenheit and vice versa. Oh, I'm not doing vice versa yet, but just to convert centigrade into Fahrenheit. So the thing is that cut is going to be contained in this object. All right. Could I be the action item listener or action listener for the button? Could I send, set any option to be that? No. Would I set an action listener for? Pardon me? Actually, I'm asking the other uh, the question in the other direction. What can I make a action listener of? A in other words, this, the app for this button. Another that we're dealing with now is going to be the the code. When the button is pressed, could anything here as this? Could I put some up here? I could. Under circumstances, could I put enough here? What kind of option would it be? A button. A button. The code that goes behind the button. All right. Uh, who are in C sharp? All right. The button is the U. The code and has the code that actually manipulates the button and has a method, has the event, the button click event. So this being defining what holds the button click event, and in this case, I'm. Saying And I have the other put in there. And the answer is some be put there, but not other object. The other implement action listener interface. So anything that is a action listener, I can plug when I set the action listener to a button. All right? Why? Because I know the is going to have the necessary to process the code. All right? That's what the thing of being an interface and implementing that interface. 
I know the method needed to do something when the button is clicked. What method? That method is this, action performed. So, by that performed, this is listener, which means that an action listener and can contain the code that when the button is clicked. So, to make a look, this method all right. And so, well, Clyde declared the value of the text determined to a dot. I'm going to throw an exception. I'm handling that. Oh, but catching the exception and displaying a text that says invalid input. Assuming that it's okay though, I go and do the computation and I set to that many degrees Fahrenheit. So, let's take this a step at a time. I, all right, what, running that is going to call main method on first GUI. What main method and first GUI do? It's a static method. It doesn't require to be an instance of the object. But here creates an instance of the class first GUI. And as so when I run that call the first GUI and what well it makes it set up it creates a panel it sets this pain itself handle when this button is clicked. I the text, the button, and then another, and then I in which I've been forced into the frame. So, those three controls live in here, get put in the frame, get put within the picture frame. And this button to this code here. So when I press the button, this method I can do my calculation. The other step here is this one. Right? That, I don't know what the user puts in it. The user puts some in the text in it. What I'm tracking at if I Convert that data to a dot. It's not an exception, which I immediately catch and display. Hey, um, you know the the input's invalid. Question? Yeah. Without. Yeah, you got to convert it to do math. What do you mean if you call this GUI twice? Yeah. Be one program running that would open that would have two windows, right? Open. Right. Worst case scenario is try it. Right? What's the worst that will happen? Yeah. 
go. The windows. Close one, they both close. Why? Because I said when you close a window, kill the app. Other questions on this? Now, for all you can drive, this might look like it gets a little tedious, right? Because you have to define. But if you go in your precious C sharp or in ASP, you'll see something very. Yeah, I, I haven't done enough um, C sharp coding uh, for desktop apps to, to, to speak to that with any degree of detail. But definitely when you do ASP.NET web pages, you'll see that that uses the ASP.NET names for a text box and a button and so on and so forth. So the only thing the GUI does for you is make your life easy for you. But I'm not here to make your life easy for you. I'm here for you to really learn what all right and this is what you have you create these objects and so the question is, is what if I a button well there's going to be a J radio something or other and you'll have to look up and see how to create that what if I want a checkbox there's a J checkbox probably and so on and so forth now the other thing is like out of this you know, this is a pretty straightforward layout. Um, but can exert some control on that. And we'll take a look at that next time. I did tell you I was going to try to leave a little extra time for lab since I went long last time. So I'll cut it off here. Take a look at the second example as well. The second example, if I remember right, does the same thing except it puts That happened early in the semester, right? I don't believe it. Um, where is the... does the same thing except it uses what's called an anonymous I actually do I actually use a couple different ways so take a look at this but keep in mind that I have some redundant code in here because I want to show you two ways of doing the listener other than having the class itself implement the listener so there is some redundant code in here because this demonstrates two different ways of handling the listener. So, um, I go in a notepad. Uh, because save it, saved it on a Mac, the carriage return and line feed is different. So if you open up different text editor, do it. It will put the line breaks in it for you. All right. So, yeah, the first one. And play the first one. Try, you know, one comes to this. Try hooking up a router. It's not a requirement, but make a link to type All right. And then have it call and display the result but within a window instead of. Um, from the command line. That would be a good exercise if you're trying to figure this out. Right. We'll see you up there.